Bless you today. Y'all look great. Amen. We're going to just welcome all of our, everyone watching by live stream, Facebook, YouTube. We welcome all, let's welcome all of our live streamers. Come on. Those of you that are here, it's good to be in the house of God. My name is Pastor Mondo, if you don't know me. I've been here for forever, it seems like. But uh, I got a great word for you because I believe it's something that we're all going through right now. And I believe it's something that we're all dealing with right now, and it's the topic of negativity. And I want to talk about staying in faith in a negative world, because that we live in a world where constant negative stuff is coming at us. More than ever, it's, we, are in a, we are seeing a, a, an overabundance of negativity. Now, there is positive things going on, but you've got to be able to filter out those things. And I really believe God, God is saying something to the church today, is that we must live by faith. We must operate in faith. We must speak faith. And we must also see through the eyes of faith as well. But before I st get started, I want to say this, 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 uh, this quote. I found, on, I found it on the Internet, and I can't, I can't claim it. I don't know who it is. But, but it really then un really cap capsulizes everything about what I'm going to say today. An entire sea of water can't, cannot sink a ship unless the water gets inside the ship. Similarity, the, the, the negativity of the world can, cannot put you down unless you allow it to get inside of you. So you and I can be in a world full of negativity, but if you allow the negativity to get in you, it will drown you. It will drown your life, it will drown your family, your finances, your whole life, it will drown you. And that drowning feeling, it will come in other forms of depression, of worry, of anxiety. That's when you know you've let some water in. See, you can, li you can live in a world that's full of negativity because the Bible says this, and, the and the God is just bringing this to my spirit, that you're like a tree that's planted by the river that does not lose its root in season but flourishes even though there's a famine going on around the, that tree. It is next to the brook. It's next to the source. And you and I are like that tree. We're, we're connected to God. And when you and I are connected to God, we can thrive, we can, we can survive, we can, we can be able to uh, 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 produce fruit even in a time where others are not producing fruit and are worrying. Have you ever heard of the, deadly, the, the seven deadly sins? There's deadly sins out there. They, 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 they say gluttony, greed, lust, wrath, sloth, envy, pride. And I've heard a bunch of deadly things. But I believe there's a few more. There's some few more to deadly things like eating bad oysters. Ooh, kukui, that's a bad one. That that right there will will knock you will knock you out. Uh, or even bad menudo. That's bad. If somebody didn't date it right, and they said it was made last week and really it was three months ago, and you're like, oh. so who? You know, menudo doesn't go bad. Who knows? Uh, anyway, here's another thing. Here's another thing that's deadly. Trying to buy toilet paper and water at Sam's or H-E-B when there's none, all right? That's deadly. You can watch out. But there are a lot of deadly things in this world. But one deadliest thing that ever that is deadly to a Christian's life is negativity. Negativity is devastating to the life of a Christian or to anyone. Negativity, uh, living a negative life has a bigger impact on your life than you realize. Negativity is a silent killer and masks itself in different forms. You may say, well, I'm not a negative person. I just worry a lot. Well, <laughs> I'm not a negative person. I'm, I just have an anger problem. Okay, dokie. I'm not a negative person, but I regret ever doing blah, 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 blah. That's negativity. Negativity will bring these things in different forms, and these two things, regret brings into your present life the power of the past life. 
When you regret something, you are bringing the power that it was at the time you experienced it right into your present time. And then you regurgitate that and you feel those emotions all over again. It's like listening to a song and you hear a song. That's why music has such an impact in people's lives and that's why worship is such important because it can bring to remembrance things. If you hear an old song, it can either make you feel sad or it can make you feel happy. Oh, I remember hearing this song, man, I was on that roller coaster, yeah, I went down there and I, you know, and it brings up a happy, a happy thing. Or you can hear a song and it's like, that's when she, that's when I lost my first girlfriend, you know. And so you can have regrets. I spent too much money on that car and I lost the car. Oh, every time I see a, 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 you know, this car come by me, it reminds me of what I lost. And we sit there and we regret and we regurgitate the pain. And that's one thing we should not do. It will sabotage your present possibilities and your present opportunities and all the things that God has promised you. It will sabotage it. You've got to remember that there's a time for everything. There's a time to weep. There's a time to praise. There's a time to, to sow. There's a time to reap. There's a time for everything. But right now, the time is for you to start walking and talking and thinking in faith. It is not the time to gather around and start to doing what the world is doing and, and start, to, to start to get in the, involved into all of that negativity. And to get into the conspiracies and all these other things. You know those things the Bible says you'll always have these things. Don't be surprised. The word God says, the Lord says even today, don't be surprised that you hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do not be surprised if you hear of deadly diseases and things that, the, that are going to come around. Even the, the elect will be deceived. Do not be surprised because the end is near. You see, the world is groaning and shaking for God to come back. So you and I should not be surprised that we're living in a world like this, but you and I can live in a world like this if we're living in the Word. Amen? Because God has built you. You were designed for battles. You were designed because the Bible says that I am an overcomer. So if I'm an overcomer, I'm constantly overcoming things. I'm constantly in a battle. I'm either going in a battle, I'm in a, or I'm, I'm in, in a battle, or I'm coming out of a battle. But either way, the Bible says, I win. Even if I make a bad move or a mistake, God says, I'll make it right. So those regrets and those worries... I don't know why I'm saying that. I didn't say it until the last service. I don't know. What, but the, those regrets and those worries that you thought that you lost, God is going to bring them back to you. But he's not going to bring them back to the person who's regurgitating the hurt. He's going to give them back to the person who's saying his word. And says, even if the canker worm and the locusts have stolen it and eaten it, God, you're going to give it right back to me. He shall supply all of my needs. He will supply it. He's El Shaddai. The God is more than enough. He wants to consistently bless us and give us the keys to the kingdom. But see, you and I must not live in regret and worry. Brings your present life into your present life the power of what could have happened or what might happen. The woulda, coulda. You sit there and worry and you say this, and you start to play out the scenarios in your life. You start playing out the scenario of you losing your job, and then this, and then that, and you start thinking, oh my gosh. And then you start playing out scenarios of your children, and what they're doing, and this, you play out the scenario. You play out the scenarios in your mind, and what you're doing, and what you don't realize is you're rewiring your brain to think negatively. There's something called neuroplasticity, which is basically the rewiring of your brain. You can rewire your brain to become a negative thinker. 
And the way you unwire or, de- or rewire your brain to think in faith is that you must speak it. Because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith don't come by prayer. Faith don't come by reading. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing of what? So who are you, who are you listening to the most? Yourself. <laughs> you hear yourself the most. You're driving. Oh, I can't stand this job. Oh, man, look at this car. Oh, I don't even have nothing to wear. I'm wearing this again. And you consistently hear yourself over and over. And you think, I'm not hurting nobody. It's just me. Uh-uh, I'm, I, 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 I speak positive to other people, but I speak negative to myself. Come on, somebody. How many of, how many of you that's you? Come on. You don't have to raise your hand, but a lot of us church folks like to do that. We speak negatively to ourselves, but we speak positively to other people. Oh, be blessed, sister. Oh, be blessed, brother. But how, when was the last time you blessed yourself? Come on, come on, come on. I know that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Pastor, don't do that. How many times have you said to yourself, you look in the mirror and says, you are blessed and highly favored. You are, you are made in the image of God. You tell yourself, you, are, you, you can do all things. You know, God is on, on your side. And you are encouraging yourself. The Bible says David encouraged himself into the Lord. Because guess what? What happens if the church closes down? Again, heavens forbid. But who is going to encourage you? If if this is the only place where you hear God's word that that says you're blessed, then you are in a bad situation. You need to start telling yourself, I'm blessed. Telling your kids, you're blessed. Telling everybody, I'm healed. My body's healed. And stop talking negative things. Stop saying it. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every circumstances, in every situation, no matter who is what and what is where and the government or the care of, of diseases, doesn't matter. By prayer and pe- petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request made own unto God. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Do not be worrying. Do not be speaking negatively. You can even say that. Do not speak negatively about anything. Don't speak negative over your family, over your kids, over your over your what God has blessed you with. Instead of saying, Well, I wish I had a better car, say, Thank God I have a car. <laughs> Instead of saying, Well, I got this pain, it hasn't happened. Well, thank God you're not in the hospital. See, we can always look, see, we're the human nature is just designed to be negative. We come out of the womb screaming, ah, we already come out with negative. <laughs> I haven't seen a baby come out and say, God bless America, God bless. Thank you, Jesus, and I haven't heard of that. It's, it's, it's no human nature for us to be negative, to think the worst. It's easy to think the worst in something. Oh, yeah. Dallas Cowboys, they're going to lose. Yeah. The Houston Texans are in no other shape, too, so don't worry about it. Yeah, Houston's going to lose. Don't worry about it. I ain't going to watch a game. This is why I watch it. This is why I watch it. Why watch it? It's easier than to go, no, they're going to make it. You're crazy, man. They're not going to make it. You know, know, but you have faith to believe. But it's easier just to say, eh. God's not going to bless me. I don't believe in that giving stuff. His promises, uh, come on, I've, I've been in church for all these years and I've yet to have this. I, it ain't going to happen. So be it unto you, the Bible says. Never give up. Luke chapter 12, 26 says, and if I worry, if the worry can't accomplish a little thing, then why worry about the big things? If worrying about a little thing is never going to, is never over going to come the little thing, then don't worry. Because what I've learned, I'm, I'm a professional worrier. I'm, I'm a, man, I have, man, I got a, the card, man. I even had it. I tell you what, I went through a, a, a mental just breakdown. 
because of just a lot of overwork, over things. And I tell you what, you get to a point to where you're like, I don't see things the way everyone else is seeing it. Everything, everything to me was, 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 a, was a big deal. Was over, it was overdramatic. And, and worry will ruin your perception of reality. It'll also, it'll also smear and, and, and blur God's promises in your life. You won't see it the way you see it because now you've been overcome by negativity. You see, it's not a, you're, you're, not, you're not possessed with something, you're oppressed with something. You're oppre- there's a pressing of worry, there's a pressing of doubt, there's a pressing of something. And the world will press. But if you go online and keep on getting in there, you're going to continue to feel that pressing. That's why coming to church, listening to praise and worship, you know, get, getting, in, you know, getting involved as much as you can in the church. That's why you need the body because you need to refresh yourself. You need the word of God. Luke chapter 12, verse 29 in the message Bible says, what am I trying to do here is to get you to relax. Come on, say relax. Relax. Like that, like Pastor Steve would probably do. Relax. Not so preoccupied with what? Getting so that you respond to God's giving. See, we're worried about getting, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, God, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me God, give me God. God says, I've already gave it to you. So now you, God says, you got to respond to God's giving. He's already, it's done. He's not going to do it. He's already done it. If he gave you Jesus, what else will he will not give you? So stop thinking about how do I get something and start looking in the word and see what God has already given to you already. He's given you joy. He's given you grace. He's given you healing. He's given you power. He's given you his name. He's given you authority over the devil. Come on. He's given you nothing formed against you. All these things. Come on. He's given you all of these things. And yet we say, I don't got anything. You have everything you need. People who know both God and how he works, soak themselves or soak yourself in God's reality. That word soak means steep. The word steep is when you get a tea bag and you're dipping it in the the water. Watch this. So if you you get a tea bag, you want to, how strong do you want it? So you keep on steeping it because I want it strong. The more I steep it, the more it gets stronger. The more tea, the more it becomes more strong. It becomes strong tea. If you want weak tea, you only steep it a little bit. And you and I, the Bible is saying, you need to start steeping in, start steeping it in faith not, instead of worry. Many of us are taking worry bags, the little worry bag, and saying, I like a lot of worry, a worry, a worry, a worry. It's not strong enough. Worry, 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 worry. And then you take a big chug of some worry. And then we go get more. And we're steeping it, steeping it. And you know what? God is saying, stop doing that and start steeping it with faith. Faith, 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 faith. God's grace. God's faith, faith, faith. And you go, need more faith. Faith, 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 faith. How do I get faith? You keep on steeping it, steeping it, soaking yourself in it. And the more you give... The more you soak, the more you steep, the stronger you get. So you cannot blame anybody. Well, I'm not strong because, you know, the church, the church or the pastor or this. No, no, no. You have the bag. Pastor Steve's not going to go to your house and go, let me take it for you and put it in your, let me do that for you. Let me help you go into your prayer closet. Go pray. Go pray. Go. Go pray. No. The Bible says you work out your own salvation. He is waiting on us. He's waiting on the church. And look what it says, God's reality, God's initiative, God's provision. You'll find your all your everyday human concerns will be met. Come on, somebody. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my de- dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. 
the kingdom of God. Says, I want to give you the keys to my kingdom. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might find rest in not, whatever you need. The Bible says, come, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And when you pray, believe that you have what? Received it. Not believe that it's one day going to come. No. When you pray, you believe you have it already. Well, I don't got it already. You're looking at it by faith. Steeping it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be healed. I'm getting that promotion. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Faith doesn't walk by what it sees. Faith by walks by what the word of God says. And if you're not, if you're seeing not, you're not seeing right, it's because you're not steeping it right. It says, don't be afraid. Right now there's so many distractions, and right now you have to fight to stay soaked in faith. You have to fight for it. You have to say, no, I'm not going to watch that. It's okay to be in, informed. It's another thing to be inundated with too much negativity. And when you get online and when you get on your phone, you can either go to a place where you can find positive, positive stuff or go in place and keep on steeping that negative tea bag in your life. It's up to you. Right now, many are soaking in themselves in this distractions that you see all over this world. Come on, do you see distractions? Can you see the distraction that the enemy is doing? Because the world and its systems, I'm not saying anybody is an enemy out there. I'm saying the world and its systems, because the Bible says that he is the God of the wor this world, which world means systems, operations, things that are happening. That's, he's the God of the circumstances, the situations, the problems. He then moves those things because he's the liturgy of that. But God is the God of the, he cannot, he can have the world, but he cannot have the earth because the earth belongs to God. Amen. The, the cattle on a thousand hill, the Bible says, those belong to me. This earth belongs to me, but the world and its system is where the devil operates. And you and I need to see it in a different way. Here's what Martin Luther King said, and we're going to, next tomorrow is Martin Luther King uh, holiday, and you want to be able to. Not just take the day off, but you want to take a, take a day to, to remember um, how this man, what he did and what, he, what his courage was. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. It's not the time where your faith, where there's nothing to fight. It's, it's when there's something to fight that you find out what's inside of you. How much faith do you really have? Can you go through a battle? Can you overcome this situation? And I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. But you cannot do it on your own. You must, you need God. You can try to do it on your own and you will fail. You will get tired. You will get weary. You'll get worried. You'll get overwhelmed. You will, you will just, you'll, you'll, you'll run out of steam. But when you've got God, the greater one in you is greater than the one that's out there in this world. Amen. Look what it says here in Proverbs. This is our main scripture, Proverbs 10, 11 in the, in the Message Bible, not in the New King James. The message, the mouth of a good person is a deep life-giving well, but the mouth of the wicked is a dark cave of abuse. Now, let me give you the difference. What is the difference between a cave and a well? A well is something that is purposely dug. I'm digging for water. I'm digging for fruit. I'm, I'm for, for vegetables, I'm digging for, for, for diamonds, rubies, I'm digging for, for wealth and health and, and, and life, I'm digging for a purpose. So when you see a well, someone dug it for a reason. But a cave is something that just happens. And so the Bible is saying your mouth can either be like a cave where you ju it just, it's just, it's influenced by the world and it just becomes a cave of negativity. If you allow yourself to be driven by what the world says, then your mouth will become a cave. In a cave, it's usually dark, and it's usually dingy, and there's nothing in there. There's no life. Stink. And usually those places, it's not a place you want to be in. But a well that is drugged, it brings forth water. It brings forth life. It brings forth things, and that's what the Bible is saying, that God is saying you must, your mouth must become a well, not a cave. 
We must come from, and how does my mouth become a well when I speak God's word? When I believe in his promises. The Bible says that the thief comes not to steal, kill, and destroy. Before he can kill and destroy, he must steal the word of God from you. You see, he doesn't attack you because he's attacking you. You think, oh, the devil's attacking me. The devil's attacking me. He's not attacking you. He's after the word, the promise that's in you. He's after that vision. He's after that purpose. He's after that dream that God has put in your life. And he wants to steal that. Therefore, he'll then, it'll then kill you and destroy the rest of you. He cannot have you unless he's got and has stolen your joy and stolen your peace. You see, the Bible says that he comes immediately when the word is take, given, like today. The word is being given to everyone watching and here. And the enemy will then come later and say, ah, that guy, that little short Mexican don't know what he's talking about. You know, you remember, everybody says it. Come on. When is it going to happen? It never happened. Blah, blah. The enemy's coming for the word. And you need to say, no, I take every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that doesn't line up with God's word because God's word says, because the word of God says, because the word of God says, and if you don't know the word of God, how can you fight back without the word of God? Because even Jesus said, the word says. When the enemy came at him, he said, the word says. Negative confessions. I like that little one back there. Amen. All I heard was, amen, back there. All right, that's good. Even some young ones are getting it. Come on, somebody. Small, look at this. Small negative confessions can have a deep, big impact. I'm going to give you this story. There was a guy that was camping, and, and he went out camping, and he was in a cot, and he was going to sleep outdoors. He said, I'm going to sleep outdoors. He got this mosquito net, put it around him, got a flashlight, made sure all the bugs were out, went to sleep. But when he woke up, he didn't realize that he left one mosquito in there. And the mosquito had bitten him 20-some-odd times all over his body. was having a feast. Probably that mosquito popped somewhere with all the blood he had sucked. But he was like, oh, my gosh. And here's the, here's the, here is the, the parable of it. If you think your small things can't make a large impact, try sleeping with a mosquito all night in a tent. Small things can make a big impact. And a negative mindset and a negative word can go a long way, can make an impact. Number one, negativity reflects inner defeat. Faith reflects inner greatness. Come on, somebody. Negativity is always about what's inside of us. The Bible says in Matthew, you brought a vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you want to know the condition of your heart, just listen to what you're saying. If you don't believe yourself, record yourself. Write down everything, you, every time you say something negative. Oh, man, I hate this. Oh, let me write that down, okay. Oh, honey, you just got, no, let me write that one down, okay. How many times, can you go the whole day without being negative? Ah, I don't know. Because you're going to have to police your mouth. You're going to have to watch it. It's hard. Because you know what we like to do? We like to point the finger. It's their fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's their fault. That's the reason why I'm angry. That's the reason why I'm a, I'm a mean person. It's their fault. And we got to stop pointing the finger at other people and start pointing the front finger right at us. Because negativity is an inner defeat, but faith believes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13 that we must examine ourselves and see and test ourselves and see what's wrong. Notice it doesn't say you're to judge other people. That's not your job. Your job is to love other people. Your job is to give grace unto people. Your job is not to judge other people. It's to love other people. You are to judge yourself and look and examine yourself and say, where do I need to change? And you feel that way when you come to church and the Holy Spirit's tugging on your heart saying, come on, you need to ask forgiveness about that thing. Come on, you need to get your life right. And right now, that's what God is doing right now. Right now, as I'm talking, God is, is telling you that negativity in your life needs to stop. Because he wants to bring about fruit in your life. Number two, negativity justifies itself, but faith justify, is justified by grace. 
Proverbs 16, 2, all the ways of man are pure in his eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. I might see something that I think is right, but it is not right. You can say it's right all day long, but it might be wrong. Because, but be, just because you see it right doesn't mean it's right. And we justify it because we're seeing it from a cave of defeat or are you seeing it from a well of victory? It's how your perception. Romans 3.24 says, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that, God, that came through Jesus Christ. So we don't want to be negative. We don't want to have it, but it's easy to be negative. It's easy to do this. It's easy. It's easy to justify our, 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 our negativity. I'm this way because they did this to me and I'm, I'm never going to change. It justifies itself. A person who has a small house a lot of times looks at another person and looks at a big house and says, I bet you he cheated on his taxes to get that big house. I know it. They're doing something wrong over there. Yeah, I, know, I know. Or they might a person who has an okay job is always negative or might be negative toward a person who's got a great job, works from this house, got, you know, three weeks or a month of vacation, and just go, la, 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 and you're like, mm-hmm. I wonder how you got that job. Who do you know? I bet you got, you. and then it goes on and on. It's like other people, people who are, you know, five foot three, like myself, are always negative about six foot people. Come on, somebody. Why are they six foot and I'm not? Come on. It's not right. I love six foot people. Don't worry about it. If you're tall, I love you. But in heaven, you will see me look for that nine foot, ten foot giant walking around the gates of gates, uh, the pearly gates. That, that'll be me, all right? Brr, this is Mondo. Number three, negativity feels threatened. But faith is peace, love, and a sound mind. Come on, we're getting to it. We're going to close it all up. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Negativity always feels threatened. Negativity directly contradicts the well that, of life that God gives us. You know what? Negative people are always judgmental. They always judge people that are positive. Negative people don't like positive people. They, they get mad at them. Why are you so positive? Hey, why can't you be negative? That's why a lot of people don't like Joel Osteen because he's always positive. He's always positive. And they think he's shallow, superficial, but really he's preaching a message of faith. He's preaching a message of positive, thinking positive because negative is such a great, it has a, it's, a, it's, it's very dangerous to us. Negative people feel uncomfortable in a church that speaks faith. So right now some of you might be uncomfortable. I don't like what he's talking about. <laughs> Maybe some of you, maybe you're already at her click. I don't like it. He's, he's, he's challenging me. You come to church, you don't like to get challenged. I don't like this. He, he's challenging me. I, I, want, I want something. No, I don't want. Let's talk about something else. But this is the thing. We need to be a people in a church that preaches and demonstrates the power and the positivity of the word of God. Amen. We need to be a people that, that protects the word. Proverbs 18.1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against white. Last one, number four, negativity magnifies and distorts the truth. But faith magnifies and exalts the grace of God. Negativity will always magnify and distort the truth. Proverbs 12.25, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Come on, somebody. Hear a good word, you hear a good sermon, you ought to say, I take that, Mm -hmm. I receive that. I receive that word. A person who's negative and lives a negative life will have anxiety, which leads to depression. Now, depression is the prison of the mind that it distorts and destructs. It's 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 a distortion. What something small looks large to them. What something, uh, what something that we start to build perceptions of things that are not real. That's why a person who has anxiety attacks, everything is heightened. Everything is a heightened thing. It's a big deal. That's because their perception has been skewed with negative negativity. And the only way to break free from negativity is 
the word of God and how the power, the power of God and the power of God's, the blood of Jesus that breaks every stronghold. Amen. Anything in your life. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21, I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness we were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. I'm going to close with this, this story. There was a boy that was lo looking for, for, for Coke cans and uh, Coke bottles. And he was going to collect a lot of Coke bottles. And he was, he was looking for a lot of Coke bottles. And he says, I'm going to go to house to house. And he went to this one house. He was thinking about going to this one house. This house was the, the town grouch lady. She was like, rah, you don't want to go there. She'll, she'll grouch you out. Man. She, rah. And everybody knew she was a grouch. Everybody knew, oh, you better stay away, man. She's going to chew you out. But he went anyway. He knocked on her door and he said, do you have any Coke bottles? And so she, he, no, she said, no. But she said, no, like, no, you know. Just ugly. No, what are you doing here? And then he said, well, do you have any old whiskey bottles? Since you look like you might be drinking some whiskey. <laughs> and she goes, son, she looked at him. Do you, do you, do I look like a type of person that would have old whiskey bottles? And so the little boy looked, came a little closer to her, looked at her, and said, well, to be honest with you, do you have any old sour vinegar bottles anywhere, laying anywhere? Because it looks like that's what you've been doing. You've been sucking lemons all day long. You're sour. And that's what I leave. Negativity will impact your present and sabotage your future. You say, well, nobody can see my negativity. Yes, we can. We can see the negativity. Out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it will show. I want you to stand. Come on, let everybody stand. Greater is he that is in your world. Than he that is in the cave of, uh, of that there. Greater is he that is in your well than he that is in the cave of the world. Greater is he. You're not living based on what's wrong around the world, but what's right in the word of God. Stop trying to fight the world and start doing what's right, what the Bible says to do. So we, we need to build our life on what, right, what's right about God instead of what's wrong with others and what's wrong with the world. Stop trying to change people. Stop trying to change, change things. Just go and start saying, Lord, I can't do anything about the world and these circumstances, but I can do one thing and I can rely on your promises. And say, Lord, I'll work on myself. I'll work on me. This is who I am. This is where I am. And this is what I'm dealing with. And some of us are dealing with negative things right now. You've been speaking negative things. There's neg you can almost feel the negativity around you. But I want you to realize that God is in control. He is in control. You might say, well, it looks like others are in control. No, God is in control. But you must see that he's in control. And you must give your life to him. You must say, Lord, here it is. Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Take me. Close your eyes right now. Those of you that are watching, just close your eyes and say, Lord, these negative thoughts, these negative feelings that I've been speaking, Lord, I just ask you to forgive me, Lord, and let me speak. Let my mouth be the, a well of living water rather than a cave. Lord, I just bless you. I thank you, Lord, because you're good. You always do good. And there's good going on right now in my life. Help me to see the goodness Help me to speak the goodness over my life. Lord, we thank you, Father, because you gave your only son to die on the cross. And his name is Jesus, and we receive him in our life right now. Let us live a life of positive.